Hello everybody and welcome to the highlight video of Game 9 of the World Chess Championship 2016. The world champion Magnus Carlsen trailing behind, lost the last game against challenger Sei Kayakin and now, well the question is will he bounce back or maybe overstretch once again? We shall see Kayakin today with the white pieces and before I begin just to point out this is just a highlight video not the full analysis for the full analysis please click on the link in the description so let's get started and we'll start right here after 23 moves and why do I start here here the opening preparation ended more or less from both players at least Carlson's opening preparation ended because here he fought for about 25 minutes so what do we have we actually had another Roy Lopez the Akan Gels variation this time for first time in the match and they followed a very well-known popular theory line and Carlson improved on uh, a game that his second cousin Chanov had played previously and we reached this position and I want to say a few words here so we see what is up a pawn it's pawn d4 and he has the bishop here so this is on the good side for white Right. What does black have as compensation? Well, the white king is a little bit open, a little bit weak, and all the white pawns are isolated, so they're not protecting each other, and they're weak, and also as a result of that, there are square weaknesses in the white position. Still, if anybody's trying for something, it's white, clearly, and there's, there's still a good amount of potential left. It's not like this is a position that's easy, easily drawn by black uh, because in some lines as we'll actually see in the game there are some possibilities against the black king and why this up a pawn after all all right so let's see how this developed we'll move rather quickly through in the next moves and there was a lot of maneuvering going on in quite a complex position difficult to play for both sides S certainly um I want to get to this position. Now we have some crazy lines going on. Carlsen has just played the rook to b5, protecting knight on d5. But this is putting a third piece into this diagonal. And really, bishop a4 is, is kind of screaming uh, on whoever is looking at his position. But it's not what Kayakin played. Kayakin went queen c2. Bishop a4 is possible, though. And I would like to take a look at it. Queen f5, that was Carlson's idea, going after his pawn. And white shouldn't take on b5 now because then his king would be in trouble and he would be forced to give up his queen. Instead, in this position, instead of taking the rook, white could also go queen f1. There's still two pieces in this diagonal. And this is interesting. Here, black needs to play rook b1. <laughs> nice deflecting move. Queen takes b1, queen takes f3, rook g2. Currently white is up a rook, but black has knight c3 going after his bishop. And the white queen has to keep this first rank protected. So queen f1, knight takes a4. And white is up in exchange here. And maybe a little bit better, but okay. For one, this is not a position you, you're you comfortable to play unless you're a computer. Uh, and for the other, I think black has enough compensation here with his active pieces and the play on the light squares. So, Kayakin went queen c2, rook a8, and in fact, at this point, bishop a4 is once again possible. But here, now black takes and uh, plays queen f5 now. Similar ideas, and queen takes b5, uh, then leads to a draw perpetual and uh, white actually shouldn't try for more because if he goes queen a3 here which looks like a good move protecting his pawn then suddenly he's losing after bishop d6 another deflecting move um, because well you cannot keep this pawn protected anymore all the squares on the third rank are under control of the black pieces and black wins So instead, Kayakin played bishop c4, and we'll move quickly once again. Rooks come up, and we get to this position. And here, Carlsen made an inaccuracy. He played knight e7, which is a very natural move, and I cannot really blame him 
for playing that. But bishop d8 would have been better. Or h5 here, I think is also quite possible. But these are difficult moves to make. Uh, bishop d8 could be a line. Rook e4, knight f6, rook e2, bishop c7 back. And still, white is better here. White is trying, white can press, and black is not fully equalizing yet, even though uh, he should be able to hold this. And after knight e7, in this position, it cost it about two minutes, and Kayakin 25, and he actually used pretty much all of his time, had less time after his move than Carlson uh, to figure out what to play here. And there are two moves. Bishop takes f7, that's what he played, and the move queen b3. And I would like to take a look here at queen b3, which was very interesting and probably better than bishop takes f7. Now, not only probably, it is better. Um, okay, the pawn is hanging, so knight f5. But white can still take. White can still take this pawn because after queen takes, queen takes, king takes, rook takes h7, this bishop on c7 is dropping because you don't want to go knight g7, then you lose the knight. But in fact, this might not be too bad. And in fact, I think this is black's best choice because um, here, first black drives the king forward and then takes on d4. And even though he's two pawns down, obviously, I think he has decent drawing chances here. But white can obviously try and has good range chance as well. But I think this, sh this should be holdable. But I would like to show you some other lines and I would also like you to, to understand that this is hugely complicated. Even for a world-class player, there's so much to calculate. For a computer, the uh, computer always makes it look easy, but in a game to play like that, where you put your rook on h3, you have a bishop hanging on f7, kind of, not an easy thing to do. So I cannot blame uh, Kayaki at all for not playing this. But it would have been a better better choice. Um, just to show some more lines here, queen e7, introducing this idea. Bishop g8 is a good move, and you have to see this as well. And here, if black now plays knight h4, and even this, uh, now a computer is screaming that white is completely winning here. But to me, with human eye, this is not obvious. I mean, white is an exchange down currently. Uh, but the way it works out here is that white has nice play against the black king and also the rook can be loose sometimes and, and white wins in all variations here. But this is really not trivial, not easy to find. Uh, just to show here some lines now. White queen is coming to d5 and that allows the bishop to join the action and black's continuing with, uh, white is continuing with his attack and will win here. Looks on bishop f6 now. All right, let's go back. So besides knight h4 in this position, there's also move h5. Once again, just crazy lines. d5, knight d4, bishop c3, pinning the knight, bishop e5, unpinning the knight. So the queen is once again under attack. But now d6, uh, counterattack. Queen g5, going out of the attack, but once again, rook g3, <laughs> attack the queen, just nuts. These lines are nuts. And we get to this endgame finally, in which white is also up two pawns. I think this is a better endgame than the one we saw previously. Uh, white has good winning chances here. All right, so let's return all the way to the back all the way back to the game. I spent quite some time on this move because it was the best chance Kayakin had in the game. After bishop takes f7, that looks also very interesting and white is temporarily sacrificing a piece here. Queen c4 check. And now king g7 is the only move. If you go to f8 or e8, then the, the attack is crushing here. And, um, well, queen d5 would drop the, the bishop on c7 and knight d5 obviously run to rook takes h7 so that means king g7 has to be played and now d5 that was his idea opening up this diagonal for the bishop and now the players had reached the time control and, and Carlson found his way out here there are other moves but knight f5 is just the, the simplest by far what is giving back 
uh, blacks giving back the material and in fact will be a pawn down here as you can see but this extra pawn really doesn't help white much and uh, there's nothing to be done here you cannot take an h7 or you could but it's just a draw immediately just perpetual right here so okay i can play queen f6 but the remaining game will go through it quickly because nothing happened here uh, white can never exchange queens well of course you can but it's just a dead draw and also with the pieces on the board with the queens on the board just nothing happening here so simple for black to defend uh, just have to make sure you don't blunder a pawn or blunder anything else but yeah not easy to blunder anything in the first place so okay i can just try it for a while why not uh, and then the players finally <laughs> agreed to a draw right here in the seven, 74th move so interesting high quality game intense also because both players were low on time again and the best chance for Kayakin was this move queen b3 but so difficult to find and he won't be unhappy with his draw because that means he's still leading there are only three games left and he gets a little bit closer to the world championship title he just has to defend now in the last well two black games that he has that he has and this these are the games where magnus has a chance of course with the white piece he will try to to get something tomorrow already in game 10. all right so that was my highlight video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did feel free to subscribe also you'll be notified for future analysis maybe that's helpful to you i don't know and then i'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye.